Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. Today is Saturday. Happy Saturday morning to you. I hope that your morning is going well. My morning is going wonderfully. It is Saturday. It's the real Saturday for me. I am off and came outside and got to sit for a little bit, have my cup of coffee here, and it is just quiet and peaceful. I can hear birds chirping. I can hear air conditioners too because it's pretty warm, I'm sure, but it's like the first, last couple days have been the first few days where it's like dropped humidity. And so it's like just a nice drier heat, if that makes sense. Like it's hot here. It's hot in Florida. It definitely is. I'll agree on that. But it's like, and it's been muggy and I'm like, okay, but it's not like awful. It's just sweaty and hot when you go outside. <laughs> so like now the humidity has dropped and it's been very nice out. We were outside all afternoon yesterday and I'm like, this is really, really nice. So today I got up, I'm like, okay, usually I come out, it's a little bit muggy, but it's like not bad at all this morning. So we're reading God's word together. We are in the book of Psalm. We're reading a couple Psalms each week. Please read more than one Psalm a week or more than two a week. And if not, that's okay. But just get in there and start reading God's word. The more, the only way you're going to have a relationship with Jesus is by getting to know him. And by getting to know him, by getting in the word of God, just read, read. We're just reading. We're picking psalm and we're reading one or two it depends on how long they are and that's where we're going you can start in the book of john and start and read one chapter read one chapter you can get the bible hub app and they have bible reading plans and you can read just like one chapter every day get through the new testament get through the old testament all of it is beneficial for your life so we're on psalm 52 and it's futility of boastful wickedness and it says why do you boast of evil O mighty man <laughs> Mm. And I guess I think about that. I'm like, do we boast of evil? Yeah, we do talk about evil people. Do we boast of it? Oh, Mixie, no, no. Oh, Mixie was trying to chase a lizard through the fence. I'm sorry. So do we boast of, of man's evil? We might not boast, but do we go on and on about the evil of things? And like bringing, I mean, there's nothing wrong with bringing light to things, but do we continually speak, continually speak, continually speak instead of speaking about yeah, but God. Let's let's speak about the yeah, but God. It says, The loving kindness of God endures all day long. Your tongue devises destruction like a sharp razor working deceitfully. You love evil more than good and falsehood more than speaking what is right. You might think, oh, that's so terrible. But how many times do we speak the truths of God instead of the problems that are going on? Oh, I'm guilty. Like, oh, I feel horrible. Oh. This situation is so bad, oh, all this. But why don't we start speaking of what God promises? Yeah, but God promises this in my life. This is what God's word says. So I'm gonna stand on this thing versus focusing on the negative. That's a good way to look at things. It says, you love all words that devour, oh deceitful tongue. But God, here's that, but God will break you down forever. He will take you away and tear you away from your tent and uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see it and fear and will scoffingly laugh saying, look, this is the man who would not make God his strength, his stronghold and fortress, but trusted in the abundance of his riches, taking refuge in his wealth. Don't take refuge in your wealth. But as for me, I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust confidently in the loving kindness of God forever and ever. I will thank you forever because you have done it. You have rescued me and kept me safe. I will wait on your name for it is good in the presence of your godly ones. We want to trust confidently in God. And it's just thanking. Like, get a heart of gratitude going. Get a, get a heart continually of of thankfulness, of gratitude to God. It's so easy. It is so easy. It is so easy to complain about things all day long. It's hot. I don't have enough for this. I don't have this or what's going on here. No, like start thanking God for the things you do have. Oh, there's so many things. Like you can just turn the mindset. I way long time ago, my old pastor, he would say, he would give you, get up every morning and say five things you're thankful for every day, like every day. And you might think, oh, no big deal. And sometimes you can get into that routine of like, you know, going on, but literally start thinking of five things. <laughs> Had to get a new battery. <laughs> and rescue Maxine, she's trying to find her way. We have a little corner of the fence where the ground has gone down and like she's like trying to break free basically. Basically, we need to fix it. Anyway, so thankfulness. <laughs> Focus on the thankfulness of things 
in your life, it's so easy, so, so easy to start complaining about things and getting that, huh, I don't have, I don't have. And you know, you can even, you can get it even when you have blessings and start like complaining. I mean, any situation you're in, you can start complaining. So start cultivating that heart of gratitude. Thanking God, like God works, loves that. God loves that. God loves a cheerful heart. God loves the thankful heart. He loves a humble heart all in his word. All right, Psalm 53, the folly and wickedness of men. It says, the empty headed fool has said in his heart, there is no God. What does he call those kind of people? An empty headed. They are corrupt and evil and have committed repulsive injustice. There is no one who does good. God has looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there's anyone who understands, who seeks after God, who requires him, who longs for him is essential to life. Every one of them has turned aside and fallen away. Together, they have um, become filthy and corrupt. There is no one who does good. No, not even one. Mm. Like how sad for God to look down and go, there's nobody. There's nobody that even does good. Have workers of wickedness no knowledge or no understanding? They eat up my bread as though they ate bread and have not called upon God. There they were in great terror and dread where there had been no terror or dread. For God scattered the bones of him who besieged you. You have put them to shame because God has rejected them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion when God restores the fortunes of his people. Let Jacob rejoice and let Israel be glad. And let's read one more. Psalm 54, the prayer for defense against the enemies. It says, save me, O God, by your name and vindicate me by your wondrous power. Hear my prayer, O God, listen to the words of my mouth, for strangers have risen against me, and violent men have sought my life. They have not set before them. They have not set God before them. Did you ever think of those things like when people, strangers, strangers, strangers have risen against me. And these are not even people that don't even know them. <laughs> they don't even know them, and they've come against me, and people have sought his life. But he's like, hear my prayer, God, and vindicate me from all of this. Behold, God is my helper and ally. The Lord is the sustainer of my life, my upholder. He will pay back the evil to my enemies. In your faithfulness, destroy them. With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you and I will give thanks and praise your name. O Lord, for it is good, for he has rescued me from every trouble. And my eye has looked with satisfaction, triumph on my enemies. I think that last line is a good thing. My eye has looked with satisfaction, the triumph on my enemies. It is so easy. It is so easy when you're going through things. It is so easy to get so wrapped up in like, like being so angry at the other person or being so angry at the situation and just wanting God, just redeem me from this, redeem me. Like, start thanking God for what you're going through. Thank God for your situation. Thank God for his redemption through that situation, how God will bring you out. Even though people are going to talk, even though people are going to point fingers, even though people are going to say things, because people do. And then let God be that vindicator in your life. Let God show up. It is so much better. It is so much better than trying to defend yourself. Trust me. No sense defending yourself. Like you should not. If there's a time like if God wants you to defend yourself for something, he'll give you the words to speak, the things to say, then you say it. But it is pointless to argue with people. It is pointless to try to defend things, even when you're defending a position like on your Christianity or about God, unless God shows you that because the Bible talks over and over about don't even cast your pearls before swine because it's pointless. It's like to argue with somebody to go over and over about something is pointless. And sometimes it's better just to be silent and let God fight for you. I remember there is this uh, scripture, I'm thinking it's in Exodus and it says, um, basically it says to be silent and let, and let God fight your battle for you. And so I thought, oh gosh, be silent? You mean don't argue back? You mean don't try to show your point? Don't try to say, well, this is why I'm, don't try to defend yourself. No, it's pointless to do those things. Let God work on that. And sometimes it's not right away. Sometimes you get, keep getting over and over and over and you're like, why, why, why? And then after you go, if you be quiet, if, that's the key, if you be quiet <laughs> and don't say anything because it's so easy to say anything. Trust me, it's our flesh just wants to uh, and say something, but it is so much better to, to let God work a situation and then you be content with it because you've given it to God. And then they come back and they say something and you're like, huh, yeah, it's so much better because it's God working on their hearts. And there's no like, oh, I told you so. There's none of that stuff because it's just 
peaceful and that is the beautiful thing of it many times many times there's many times where I've just rant and said and, and defended and did all those things and it got me nowhere it got me nowhere and it just got more arguments and God's like what are you doing Amy I said just to be silent and I'm like I know I know but your flesh just wants to defend 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 because we get hurt we get hurt and it's so easy to want to do that but then when you can just go okay let God do it I'm not even gonna worry about it and then God does it because he does you go, huh, it's so much better because you don't need that satisfaction. You don't need that. And then the situation works out and it turns for your favor. It's like an added bonus in your life. And it's like, that's a good thing. So getting your heart like set like that, getting your heart where it doesn't need that. Being so content in God. We want to be so content in Jesus that we don't even have to like get upset about things because our world's got so much that we can get upset about. It's so easy to get so wrapped up in things, but being so content, not getting offended, not like people getting mad at you and you just kind of smiling through it going, okay, that's if that's what you think, that's okay. I can't change, you can't change man's opinions. You can't change man's thoughts, but you can change the way you look at things and how you do things and being led by God and focusing on him, letting him lead you through things. And then when he does, which he will every day, if you ask him, you can walk confidently in things and you don't feel like you need to do this. You won't question, well, maybe those things, those thoughts won't get in your head. Those thoughts won't get in your head to go, yeah, but maybe what they say is true. Well, maybe it did show that way or you no, know, like you don't have to walk in that. You can just be confident that God has got you where you're at. And if you mess something up, you know what? God will just work those things out for good because he knows your heart. That's the key. And you don't have to worry about the naysayers. You don't have to worry about things and not being offended. That's another great thing. Don't be offended by things. <laughs> one, of, one of my pastors told us that and I was like, don't be offended. It's like, don't be offended, Amy, about anything. I'm like, eh, try it, try it. Try not to be offended. Just do it this week. Try not to be offended and watch. It's hard at first, but then once you learn it, it's like letting that go. Air conditioner's off now, now it's quiet. <laughs> you let that go, it's like, wow, yeah, I can walk. It, like, it doesn't bother you on things. It's just, it's a freeing thing when you let those things that you want in control in your life. You know, you talk in church about those chains being broken and living freedom in Christ and being free. You don't really know those freedoms because we are so into those things. We aren't free in Jesus. We aren't free to worship how we want. We aren't free to... <laughs> There's Maxine going after her neighbor dog. Hold on. A little ruckus in the neighborhood. Neighborhood dog's going crazy. <laughs> it's okay. Max, Max, hey. She's like, I'm trying to protect you, Mom, and make sure there's nobody else. We're good. So anyways, being free, being completely free and not having any of those qualms in your life, it's an amazing, amazing thing. And people say that you're just going through life blindly and you're just going through what... No, it's actually just... You don't worry about those things and you are free from those and it doesn't build anxiety in you. It doesn't build the pressures inside of you. It helps not build those anxieties in you and those things because there's no reason to be upset. There's no reason to make them bother you. It's just freedom, the freedom in Jesus. What it talks about in his word here. So get in this word, keep reading it. We're gonna, it's like, it's a journey. It's not something you learn overnight, but the more you learn, the more you get in there and read it over and over and get those truths in you, it's like, oh, it's like one day you're like, ah, I see, I see. It's an amazing, amazing thing. So, all right, Maxine's just going to bark away this morning. She's making sure there's nothing else. So, nice and quiet now. I had the air conditioner on back here. <laughs> so it was kind of loud, but hopefully not too bad. So you have a fantastic, I'm talking fantastic rest of your day. And I'm going to see you guys again on Monday with another video. All right, see you Monday. Bye.